Ring the dinner bell for Trout, Kokanee, and Landlock Kings with Kel Kellogg's Willow Leaf Dodgers. Available in mini and magnum sizes at fishhuntshoot.com. Get yours today. Ian, where'd you get that big old rainbow on? Worm. A worm and a uh, mini willow leaf mini dodger worm. in the reggae watermelon color. What a gorgeous fish, man. Collins Lake, baby. That's what it's all about. Awesome. Howdy guys, Cal Kellogg here. My hands are full of attractors. And uh, here on the channel, we get a ton of questions about various kinds of attractors. We get questions about flashers. We get questions about dodgers. We get questions about how to use them, when to use them, what to use them with. So I know there's a lot of folks out there, both beginning anglers and you know some intermediate anglers that are, you know, they're out there, they're trolling, but they just don't understand where attractors fit into their trolling spread. Uh, they don't understand what situations to use them in. They don't understand how to use them. So, you know me, I've been trout trolling for years and I really only use three types of attractors th these days. Now, this is one you have undoubtedly have in your tackle box. These are my Fish Eye Pros. A lot of companies market a slim profile dodger like this. I like mine, they work great. Um, they, they just flat out perform. They come in six inch sizes like that and they come in four inch sizes like that. Sometimes I'll run these in my spread just to pull in fish. Um, if I'm in a big open water impoundment, I like to go with the six inch. If I'm in, you know, I could be in a big open water impoundment, but typically a medium to small size lake, I'm gonna run the four inch. And more often than not, when I'm pulling a blade like this, I'm using it with a fairly short leader to impart some sort of action on a worm or on a tube or on an anchovy filet, on something like that. I'm using it to impart action to the lure. So I'm running the lure, you know, anywhere from three to four dodger links behind the blade, and it's giving my lure that nice stop start action. Um, that's the type of fishing you do at Shasta, Don Pedro, Folsom at times. Big areas of open water where you need to draw fish in, and then you need to show them something that looks like a minnow. The dodger mimics a feeding trout. The trout come in to check it out, or the kings come in to check it out, and what do they see? They see a white tube, and it's pulsing and moving in the water. It looks like a minnow. I've got that little piece of anchovy skin on there. It smells like a minnow. It tastes like a minnow. They grab it, they gulp it down, fish on. I am a happy camper. So that's what I use my standard four and six inch blades for, okay? So we'll put those down. Now in this hand, I have flashers. I have two examples of flashers. I have my fisheye flasher, just a rotating metal blade. Um, I can run lures behind that, that, that mimic bait fish, things like spoons. I can run a threaded crawler, all kinds of stuff behind it. I don't use it to impart action to the lure. I use it to draw fish in 
they see the lure. It's a very unique whirling sound through the water. It puts out a lot of flash. They come in out of curiosity to check it out. They see my offering, which has its own action. If it's a threaded worm, it's rotating on its own. If it's a trigger spoon junior, it's got its own swimming motion. If it's a grub, it's got that tail going. The, the lure, I typically am gonna space the lure out anywhere from 36 to 40 inches behind the flasher. The lure has its own action. The fish comes in to check out the flasher, sees the lure, fish on. Situation is very much the same with the turbo flasher. This is much subtler than the fisheye flasher. It puts out a high pitched whirling vibration. It just spins super fast. It puts out a ton of noise. Um, if you're using the chrome models, it puts out a ton of flash. If you're in stained water, like we are up here at Collins Lake, the bright colored you know, uh, turbos, they work great. This is something I love to troll a worm behind. Again, 36 to 40 inches behind the turbo. This is just being used to pull fish in the vicinity. They see the bait, they taste the bait, I catch the fish. So we've covered standard dodgers and flashers, and these are relatively new to my, my trolling arsenal. The small, you know, broadhead or willow leaf shaped dodgers. I use these in very much the same way as I use a flasher, but the flash that they put off and the vibrations that they put out are very different. These are classic Dodgers. They kick, they kick in the water column. I almost never use these to impart any kind of action on the lure. I space the lures or the baits, you know, here at Collins Lake, we've been pulling a lot of worms. I'll get that bait again, 36 to 40 inches behind one of these blades. If I'm in a bigger impoundment or deeper water, I tend to run the Magnum uh, Willow Leaf. If I'm in a lake here like Collins, a small lake, I tend to run the Mini, um, but I use them both the same way. I'm gonna put a worm or a grub or a spoon 36 to 40 inches behind them. The blade is gonna pull the fish into the spread. They're gonna get close enough to zero in on the lure or the bait and uh, you know, fingers crossed, they're gonna grab it. That is my philosophy on how I use attractors. Um, and you'll notice, out of the, the three scenarios I just threw out there, the three different kinds of blades I threw out there, the only one I use to impart any kind of action to my bait is the standard four and six inch dodgers, okay? Um, the rest, they're just to pull fish into the spread and you know get the fish close enough so the lure, the threaded worm, the, the rig shad, whatever it is, can close the deal on its own. Here we've got a little bit of murk in the water. Some days they want that turbo flasher. Some days they want the mini willow. Some days they'll hit both. You just can't tell. So that's how I approach using attractors in my trolling spreads. Your mileage may differ. You need to get out on the water, experiment, fish in a lot of different situations, and the pieces of the puzzle are gonna start to come together for you. And uh, that's what I advise, you know, if you're looking at any aspect of trout trolling. The stuff that I pass on to you guys, it's cornerstone stuff. Take those thoughts, those ideas, those techniques out on the water, and then put them to use at your lakes, in the environment, across different situations, on rainy days, overcast days, windy days, muddy water days, clear water days, you're gonna to start to gain that, that strong base of experience and pretty soon you're gonna be able to go to a lake and say it's a little bit stained here. We've had some rain, the water temperature is 51 degrees. Well, guess what? I'm putting on a, minnow, a mini willow leaf with a worm 30 inches behind it because situationally, I've seen it many times, that's what the conditions call for. And when you get to that point, you're gonna almost always catch fish and uh, you're gonna catch fish consistently. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. If you're looking for any of the tackle you see me using here on the channel, any of the rods, reels, all that stuff and more, you know where to go, fishhuntshoot.com. I'm signing off for now. I'm Cal Kellogg. You have a great day and I will catch you later right here on YouTube. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and you will always know when I'm on here talking about tackle or my dog Lucy or UFOs or whatever tickles my fancy on any given day. Anyway, you have a great day and I'll catch you later.